pals, this week on Go With The Heat, we review Season 1 and pick out the best of the best of Miami Vice's first season. On This Week in Vice, we'll be covering the time between Seasons 1 and 2. In this week's episode, we'll take a look back at June 17th to July 28th, 1985, when Miami Vice was king. In news, on July 13th, the joint concert Live Aid took place at Wembley Stadium in London and John F. Kennedy Stadium in Philadelphia. Attended by a total of 170,000 people, Live Aid raised over $70 million for relief of the ongoing famine in Ethiopia. Simultaneously performing at two venues, Live Aid was also broadcast on the BBC and ABC television networks. Notable performers include Sting, Phil Collins, U2, Dire Straits, Queen, David Bowie, The Who, Elton John, and Paul McCartney. On July 14th, the Baltimore Stars defeated the Oakland Invaders in the last USFL game. For three seasons, the USFL was an American football league that played a spring and summer schedule. Although not a financial success, the league produced great games on the field and was considered a quality competitor to the NFL. USFL alumni include Jim Kelly, Steve Young, Reggie White, and Herschel Walker. Following the 1985 season, the USFL planned to move to a fall schedule to compete with the NFL at the urging of the New Jersey Generals owner Donald Trump and a small group of other owners. The league would fold before the start of the 1986 season, being another signpost along the path of failed Donald Trump ventures. In music, during this six-week stretch, four songs held the top spot at the Billboard Hot 100. First comes the ballad Heaven by Brian Adams. From the 1983 film A Night in Heaven soundtrack, Heaven would reach the top of the charts a year and a half after it was first recorded. Written by Jim Valance, the song would hold the top spot for two weeks. Replacing Heaven comes another Phil Collins classic, Susudio, from the amazing No Jacket Required album. An improvised lyric, Susudio has long been one of Phil Collins' most recognizable songs. After Susudio, Duran Duran's A View to a Kill reached the number one spot for two weeks. The theme song for a James Bond film of the same name and Duran Duran's most famous song, A View to a Kill, is the only Bond theme to ever reach the top of the Billboard charts. The last song on our list is Every Time You Go Away by Paul Young. Originally written by Daryl Hall and recorded in 1980 by Hall & Oates, the song was never released. Paul Young covered the song for the album The Secret of Association. It remained his only number one hit. time, four movies held the box office, each for just one week. First was the Ron Howard film Cocoon, a science fiction movie loosely based on the novel of the same name. The film centers around a band of elderly people finding themselves rejuvenated by aliens. A sentimental yet funny movie, Cocoon is an often forgotten classic of the 80s. Next is the Clint Eastwood western Pale Rider. Produced, directed, and starring Clint Eastwood, the film was the highest grossing western of the 80s. I'm a huge fan of westerns and really sad this film genre has virtually disappeared. Last on the list of the movies at the top of the box office is the comedy sequel European Vacation. Written by John Hughes and Robert Klein, The Griswold Family Returns, starring Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo. The family wins a free trip to Europe after winning the game show Pig in a Pope. Panned by critics, the film was a financial success and led the way for the most important National Lampoon's movie ever in Christmas Vacation. <laughs> As you heard me say before, there were four movies, but I'm skipping a film in this week's episode of This Week in Vice. During this span, the amazing, fantastic, exceptional movie Back to the Future was released. For the entire summer and the rest of the time period between seasons one and two of Miami Vice, except for the one week European vacation held the box office, Back to the Future was king of 1985. Next time on This Week in Vice, we'll exclusively spend our movie time on this classic. And that's everything you need to know that was happening when Miami Vice was king. Next week on Go With The Heat, we'll be going into a deep dive about Jan Hammer, so be sure to keep tuned and subscribe to our main show. Or come back here next week to hear the last section of the summer between seasons one and two for Miami Vice. And that's everything that happened this time. Bye, pals. (laughs) 